what's up everybody? Brian Dean here, founder of Backlinko. And in this video, I'm gonna show you my process for finding untapped keywords. If you're looking to level up your SEO skills, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you'll get notified of upcoming videos on the channel. In fact, this video is an excerpt from my SEO crash course on SEMrush Academy. So if you're excited about this material and wanna learn more, go to the Academy page by clicking on the link in the description and enroll in the full course now. With that, let's dive in. As you may already know, keyword research is the process of finding keywords that customers search for. And as it turns out, keyword research is, in many ways, the most important part of SEO. Why? Well, keyword research impacts every other SEO task that you perform, including finding content topics, on-page SEO, email outreach, and content promotion. Put another way, keywords are like a compass for your SEO campaigns. They tell you where to go and whether or not you're making progress. And as a bonus, researching keywords help you better understand your target audience. That's because keyword research gives you insights into what customers are searching for and the exact words and phrases that they use. In other words, keyword research is really market research for the 21st century. Unfortunately, most people go about keyword research the wrong way and it hurts them. You see, most people start off by firing up a keyword research tool. Then they enter a few random terms into the tool and pick a keyword out of thin air. For example, let's say that your site sells meal plans. Most people that are new to SEO would enter meal plans into a tool and grab a few random keywords that their gut tells them are good picks. This sort of scattershot approach tends to bring up super competitive keywords. In other words, the same keywords that everyone and their mom sees. Needless to say, this isn't how pros do keyword research. Pros actually spend a lot of time finding solid seed keywords, also known as the keywords that you type into a keyword research tool. Because the better the seed keywords that you type in, the better results you're gonna get. For example, the site owner that sells meal plans that spends a few minutes coming up with seed keywords will come up with interesting terms like keto diet snacks and paleo desserts. These seed keywords are gonna generate much better results than an obvious seed keyword that your competitors are already using. They'll also generally generate keyword ideas that are much less competitive to rank for. More on that later. Which leads us to step number one of my keyword research process, develop a handful of seed keywords. These are keywords that you'll enter in a keyword research tool later on. So how do you do it? First, you wanna brainstorm words and phrases that are related to your business. For example, let's say that you run a digital marketing agency. Well, you'd wanna ask yourself, what topics do people search for that are related to my business? Some topics that come to mind would be things like social media, email marketing, website traffic, content marketing, blogging, and PPC. Now remember, you're just brainstorming here, nothing set in stone. So don't be afraid to jot down anything that comes to mind. You can always change or delete it later on. Second, find searches related to terms in Google search. Another cool way to find keywords is to check out the searches related to section at the bottom of Google search results. For example, let's say a term that you had in mind was organic dog food. Well, you'd wanna search for that keyword in Google and scroll down to the bottom of the page. There you'll find a list of eight keywords that are closely related to your search term. Now, an important thing to note here is that these are keyword ideas that come straight from Google. So you don't need to guess whether or not they're popular. Google is literally telling you tons of people are searching for these related keywords. Now, as a pro tip, you can click on one of the searches related to keywords, then scroll down to the bottom of those results, and this will give you a whole new list of related keywords and bring up seed keywords that would be hard to find otherwise. Next up, check out Wikipedia. In my experience, Wikipedia is an overlooked keyword research gold mine. Where else can you find articles curated by thousands of industry experts all organized into neat little categories. So here's how to use Wikipedia to find keyword ideas. First, head over to Wikipedia and type in a broad keyword related to your niche. For example, let's say that you run an e-commerce site that sells organic coffee. You'd wanna enter coffee into Wikipedia search. That will take you to the Wikipedia entry for that broad topic. Then look for the content section of the page. This section lists out the subtopics covered 
on that page. And some of the subtopics listed here are awesome keywords that would be tough to find any other way. You can also click on some of the internal links on the page to check out the table of contents of other closely related entries. For example, on the coffee entry, we have a link to coffee preparation. When you click on that link, you'll notice that the table of contents for the coffee preparation page has even more keywords that you can add to your list. Another strategy is to use SEMrush's keyword magic tool. This feature does one simple thing and it does it well. It generates a lot of keyword ideas. For example, when I put paleo diet desserts into it, a lot of these keywords aren't just variations of the keyword that you typed in. They're unique keywords that are actually really outside the box seed keywords. So quickly scan this list for anything interesting that stands out and move on to our final strategy, which is to find topics on Reddit. Chances are your target audience hangs out on Reddit already, which means you can usually find a lot of great keyword ideas on this platform. Here's how. So let's say that you run a site that sells organic dog food. So you'd head over to Reddit, then search for a broad topic that your target audience is interested in and something that's related to what you sell. Then choose a subreddit where your audience probably hangs out. Finally, keep an eye out for threads that have lots of comments like this. In this case, you'd wanna add dog food allergies to your seed keywords list. One thing to keep in mind about these strategies is that you don't need to execute all of them. Just choose the strategies that make the most sense for you and your business. The important thing is that at this point you should have at least five and maybe even 20 or more seed keywords jotted down somewhere. Which leads us to step two of this process, generate keyword ideas. So now that you have a list of seed keywords, it's time to use a keyword research tool to generate new keyword ideas and find metrics on each keyword. For now, we're not gonna worry about metrics. Instead, you're just gonna enter each of your seed keywords into SEMrush's keyword overview tool. For example, let's say that one of your seed keywords is this. Just enter that seed keyword into this field and SEMrush will give you a bunch of metrics on that seed keyword. Now, you can ignore these metrics for now because remember, our goal at this point is really just to generate lots of different keyword ideas based on the seed keywords that you just found. To find those ideas, click on related keywords. This brings up keywords that are variations of your main keyword like this, but also outside the box keywords that would be hard to come up with on your own, like this. Which leads us to our third step, which is to choose five keywords. So at this point, you have a bunch of potential keywords. What's next? You wanna choose five high potential keywords. These are keywords that you'll create content around in the next lesson. You can always repeat these steps later on once your first five articles are finished. So back to this lesson, how do you choose five keywords with the most potential? When it comes to choosing keywords, there are a million and one different factors to take into account from seasonality to how much the keyword is trending up or down over time. And as you get more advanced to SEO, you can be a little bit more scientific when it comes to choosing keywords. But for our purposes of just getting started and making progress, you really only need to worry about three factors, competition, search volume, and revenue potential. Let me cover each of those factors right now. First up, we have keyword competition. As the name suggests, this is how hard it is to rank for that specific keyword in Google. If you're just starting out in SEO or if your site is brand new, you do want to focus quite a bit on low competition keywords. That way your site can get some early traction and traffic relatively quickly. And you can start to go after more competitive keywords later on. For example, when I first launched my site, I targeted relatively easy keywords like this. Then as my site built up some authority, I started to target more competitive terms like this. To find low competition keywords in SEMrush, just click on this KD percentage button, then choose very easy. This will bring up the lowest competition terms on the list. Now, if you don't find anything good with that filter, no worries, just change it to easy. This still brings up low competition terms. They're just not quite as wide open as those very easy keywords. Next, you wanna see how many people search for the keywords that are still on your list, also known as monthly search volume. The question is, how many searches does a keyword need to make it worth optimizing for? The short answer is, 
It depends. The longer answer is there's really no minimum search volume for everybody because every industry is completely different. For example, in my niche, B2B, a keyword with a search volume of 25,000 a month is really high. But in a B2C space like fitness, 25K is nothing. So I recommend choosing a keyword that has relatively strong search volume for your industry. Specifically, sort your keyword list in SEMrush by search volume. This will bring up keywords that have the most monthly searches. And you can scroll down the list from there. In general, more searches equals more potential traffic for you. So if a keyword has high search volume and low competition, that usually makes it a winner. But there's still one last factor to consider, revenue potential. Now it's one thing for a keyword to get lots of searches, and have low competition. But the more important question is, will that keyword actually make you any money? There are two ways to figure that out. First, check out the CPC in SEMrush. This is SEMrush's estimate of how much an advertiser generally spends for a single click in Google Ads. As you might expect, the higher this number, the better. For example, you can see that this keyword CPC is only a few cents. So even if you did rank for this keyword, it would probably only bring in mostly tire kickers. But this other keyword with similar competition and search volume has a cost per click of over $10. That keyword is much more likely to bring in paying customers. The second element of earning potential is called product keyword fit. In other words, does this keyword have anything to do with what you sell? Now obviously, the closer the keyword is to your product or service, the better that that searcher is gonna convert. That said, you don't always need to target keywords that are directly related to what you sell. For example, let's say that you sell organic dog treats on your e-commerce site. Now a keyword like organic dog treats would be a perfect product keyword fit, but it's probably too competitive if you're just starting out. On the other hand, these keywords don't have quite as strong of a product keyword fit, but there's still keywords that health conscious dog owners, your target customer, searches for in Google. And when you get them to your site, many of them will head over to your product and category pages, sign up for your email list, or follow you on social media. All of which mean that they can buy from you then, or later down the road. And if after all this, you don't have five keywords yet, you can just enter another seed keyword and go through this process again. So yeah, at the end of the day, there's no magic formula that's gonna tell you this is the perfect keyword for you. It's really more of an art than a science. But as long as you pick keywords based on some combination of the three factors that I outlined above, competition, search volume, and revenue potential, you're on the right track. So yeah, once you have your five keywords, you're good to go. And remember, these keywords aren't set in stone. There's really no need to overthink this process. The important thing now is just to jot down five keywords so you're ready for the next lesson. You can always change or replace them later if you find that they're not good fits for whatever reason. So to quickly recap, you learn that keyword research is an important first step to succeeding with SEO. I also showed you the step-by-step -step process that you can use to find great keywords for your site. Now that you've seen this entire process, I encourage you to enroll in the full Academy course where you'll learn more about creating amazing content, building backlinks to your site, and how to track and monitor your SEO results. See you in the next video.